wonder if you can take a cheap pile of drums and make them sound like a million bucks? We're going to find out today. So what does it take to get a drum set that was probably used, that's probably 20 plus years old because that makes it affordable? How do you take that and you make it sound good? Well, it takes a combination of things, but we're going to talk about all of that today with this beautiful drum set for a birthday boy, David. David, thank you so much for lending us this drum set and to his, his buddy Ben for helping us out today with this. And we're going to make these things sing. And the first thing you got to think about here is the drums themselves. You know, like how do you pick a good inexpensive drum set? Well, here, this, these drums are like over 25 years old, about 25 years old. And the first thing that I see here that I like to see on inexpensive drums is a lacquer finish or a, an oil type of finish, no wrap. The benefit of that is that those drums are gonna sing much better than they would with a wrap on them. A wrap is just gonna dampen the drums. The other part is the wood. So the wood on these, we don't know for sure, but there's like some maple, some mahogany, probably some poplar in the mix somewhere. It makes for a decent little drum here. Now, if you get something that's made out of fricking balsa, you're never going to get a tone out of there that you like. So pay up for a little bit of a better wood. The way you can tell uh, if a wood is better, one way is to look on the inside of the drum. Does that inner ply of wood look really rough or does it look like it's been finished nicely? Usually if it's a nicer finish to that ply on the inside, that's a good sign that the drum itself is made to a little bit of a better specification. Beyond those things, I preach this all day long, but the bearing edge. So when I was reheading these drums here with Benny Boy, I was looking at one of the drums and I saw that there's a nice round over on the edge and it comes to a nice 45 on the inside. So with that cut on there, these drums are going to take any head, sound good because of the tone of the head itself, but because that round over is on there and you have a decent type of wood that's making up these drums, the drums are gonna help provide a better tone in and of themselves. So let's get to the head part. I'm an Evans man. My dad, he wanted to name me Evan for Evans heads, but my mom wouldn't allow it. So today what we're looking at here on the snare is the HD dry. This is a classic snare drum head for a lot of folks. And what's really cool is you have a dampening ring on the inside with, you can't see, I'm just looking at it. You can't see anything out there. We got a dampening ring on the inside and these little dotties here, that's a technical term, that help dry up the tone of the drum without having any extra ring, no tape, no nothing on here. So it's, it's just take it and leave. When you go to the gig, you ain't got to worry about taking any accessories with you to dampen it, which is really nice. You can get a nice low tone out of it. When you get high and tight, you really get that nice sort of uh, funk tone out of it. Uh, great head. On the toms, go to the B-roll. On the toms, you're going to see the Evans Onyx heads. Now, I know you've probably seen me playing these freaking things on every drum set on this channel, but I'm going to keep singing the praises of these drum heads. Because what you can do is whether you have a $10 drum set or a $10,000 drum set, not only are they going to sound good because the head is a nice quality head and it's made in such a way to make every drum sing, but they still let you retain the original tone of whatever drums you have. If you got a maple set with a certain type of edge, it's going to sound like those drums. If you have a birch set with another type of edge, it's going to let those drums sing in the way that the manufacturer intended. So good drums, you want a uh, no wrap, you want a decent edge, you want decent wood, and just make sure you get good heads on there and make sure you tune them right. We're going to get into the specificities of tuning in another video, but for today, I'm going to tell you right now, snares, tune the bottom of the snare high and tight. Tune the top to taste, whether that's low, medium, or high. On the toms, I like my top heads lower than the bottom heads. I want the uh, bottom heads higher. You can think of it this way. The bottom head is gonna change your pitch. The top head is gonna change your tone. And that goes for the kicks too. I want the batter side lower than the front. And where normally on the front, you'd see that I'd have a felt strip. Today, the drums that were provided by uh, Birthday Boy David have a giant piece of uh, sort of like an egg, I forget what they call egg crate foam. And what that's doing is not only is it dampening the reflections in the drum, but it's also touching both heads, the front and back heads. So it's dampening the tone of that drum. Basically, it makes it easier to get a nice, quick recorded tone out of the drum. That's basically the gist of it. It is not that hard to get drums that might not cost, you know, these, this set right here, you could probably find for 400 bucks, maybe 350 if you're on a good day. And uh, we combine them here with good symbols. Symbols are the one thing I don't think you can cheap out on because it comes down to the alloy, the type of metal. B8s, 
you know, you see kids playing them, they almost look more orange than uh, good symbols, which are generally B12 or then B20. Is B20 is the main thing here, which are some of the Zildjians you see. I have a, a custom 18 inch crash over here. This is uh, David's, all these are David's. 22 inch K ride by Zildjian, 14 inch K hi-hat top over a 14 inch quick beat, which is like a flat bottom. And then the one oddball in the group here is a Dream Bliss crash ride. That is a 19. And you can mix that with these other symbols because it's made of a very similar B20 alloy. Now there's gonna be a little bit of difference between the Zildjian and the, and the Dream stuff, but it's just about the same. So it should all sound good together, especially now that we have all these nice heads on here. We've tuned them really nicely. You got good mics, you got a good room. And uh, not to toot my own freaking horn here, but you got a good drummer too. So let's just hear these drums flat out. Listen. I think those drums sound pretty good in and of themselves. And they're gonna sound even better with some music. So we'll give that a listen in a minute. But what are these drums? I have purposefully not told you what the heck they were until that was that was not purposeful. I didn't even remember. Benny Boy over he's over here. He's like, were you were you purposefully not telling me what the drums were? No, I'm just an idiot. Welcome to the basement, my friends. These are Mapex Mars Pro drums. Uh David, the owner, bought them brand new back in about 1998, Ben. Is that right? So Wonderful drums, again, great little set of drums, not expensive today, um, so you can find them for a reasonable price. The only thing that I think some people might complain about is gonna be the tom sizes. So often now we're going back to classic tom depths, where normally a 12 inch tom would be eight inches in depth, this is 10. So it can be a little harder to get around physically on a drum set with these deeper toms, especially if you would use a center mount that would go on the bass drum, because now you gotta have your freaking toms up in the sky. To avoid that issue, we've got the 12 here on a snare stand, which brings it down to a nice reasonable height. Now it would normally be a rack tom here as a, a, used as a floor. This is a 13 by 11, uh, 16 by 16, 22 by 18 kick, 14 by six and a half snare. Pretty, pretty standard as far as the kick and snare go, but these Tom's big boys, so. Oh, we got the virgin kick as well. Ben is very, very good to point that out. Now, that's a good point that you bring that up here too, because if you didn't have a port in this kick and you wanted to have a big boomy kick sound, if this was not a virgin kick, meaning that it did not have a, a you know, virgin means it doesn't have any holes in the top basically for, for kick mounts. If this had a kick, uh, a hole in here for a, a kick mount for your toms, well, now you're going to have air leaving that drum every time you hit it. So something to keep in mind because that's going to dry out your tone and change your tone generally. My Ludwig Classic Maple that you see all the time, that's got a virgin kick drum. My Revet kick that I, a kit that I use often is a virgin kick. My Green Sparkle, almost everything you see, except for poor old Moldy here, which is just full of holes, everything's a uh, virgin kick on the kits. And that does help me to really focus the sound just the way I want, because the only thing the only sort of hole I have to worry about, port I have to worry about, is what's on that front head. All right, now that you've heard me yapping for about 20 minutes, let's give these things a listen with some music. They sound pretty good with the music too. Whether it's in a music context or just drums being played in a room that's gonna tick off your mom upstairs. Either way, they're gonna sound good to you. So I wanna thank David again. Happy birthday to David. Thank you for letting us uh, play these drums and putts with these drums and for Ben for bringing them up and hanging out today. Now, question of the day. Do you have a piece of drunk drum and do you need it to sound better? Tell me the details in the comments. I'm gonna do my best to help you make a piece of junk into a nice percussive hunk. How do you like that, folks? <laughs> All right, have a good one.